Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for once again joining me for tea time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. So, so good. A little bit of smokiness to that Lapsung tea in there. Really good. So guys, if you want to pick these up, as I always say, go over to darkmoonteas.com or head over to my website, jchristina.com. Check them out over there. And if you are a subscriber to the channel, use promo code YT20 at checkout and you will get 20% off anything and everything in your shopping cart. Don't forget, YT20. Anyways, guys, today is going to be a Canon day and it's gonna be more of a tech Canon day technology you know i love technology and if i can ever mix technology with photography with creativity of any kind it's just beautiful it's a beautiful thing anyways we're going to be talking about canon's brand new supercomputer that they're purchasing from fujitsu um but before i get into it i want to say that if you haven't downloaded my ebook go over to jchristina.com forward slash ebook once again jchristina.com forward slash ebook 10 tips at getting tack sharp images tack sharp images guys it's free absolutely free there's something in there for amateurs pro ams and of course for even professionals go check it out once again jchristina.com forward slash ebook go grab a copy Anyway, so Canon is picking up this brand new supercomputer from Fujitsu. Now, I believe this supercomputer, it's the FX1000, is a joint venture between Fujitsu and Riken, I believe the company is, and they create these supercomputers. Mega fast, really crazy, crazy supercomputers. It's like the Whopper. So anyways, guys, the reasonings behind this is basically to reduce prototyping, to reduce R&D cost, to reduce the amount of time it takes to get a product to market, but also to increase efficiency and maybe even functionality when it comes to product. But the main thing is to be able to go to a no prototyping type of situation where instead of having to create a product, let's say in CAD, and then go and carve it out on a CNC machine or on a printer, and then do the prototyping that way in a physical form, they'll be able to do it, but virtually. So it will definitely speed things up. Now, this computer that's being ordered is that FX1000, but what people don't understand is Canon already has a couple of these supercomputers from Fujitsu, but they're a few years old. They have the FX10 and they also have the FX100. This is an FX1000. As you can see, they're getting exponentially faster. Now this computer, this FX1000, is a petascale, let's say, computer. All right, it can be scaled up to a petabyte of data of manipulation per second, guys, per second. Now, there's not many of these in the world. Now, the theoretical speed of this specific supercomputer is 650 teraflops. Now, those 650 teraflops, it's happening basically with 192 nodes. So just think about 192 computers, let's say, strapped into or feeding into one brain, all right? This is how this is accomplished. So each one of those nodes, let's say, represents a computer that has a CPU, it has memory, and this all leads back to the one central, let's say, uh, through this nervous system into the main brain. Now, to get an understanding of the speed of this, to break it down so it's easily understood, we were talking about the PlayStation 5 in a couple of videos ago and how I was really excited about it and I can't wait to see what it's going to be like. And I'm most likely gonna pick one of those up and probably pick up an Xbox too because I have like a ton, just about I think every game console that ever came out, including an Atari Pong I have and a 2600 and an Intellivision and yeah, you get the point. Anyway, so I have a lot of them because I just, I just absolutely love them. Well, we were talking about the PS5 and how the PS5 has right around, let's call it 10 teraflops of data manipulation that it can do, 
all right, which is a lot. It is a lot. But just think about 10 teraflops on a PS5 and this having 650 teraflops. You're talking about 65 times as much. So it would be the equivalent of taking 65 PlayStation 5s, putting them all together, and then joining them into one central brain, all right? And allowing these 65 PS5s to crunch numbers all at the same time, and then feed those numbers into the main central head unit, let's call it, just to give you a scope. Now, some of you understand what megabytes are. So when you hear a teraflop or a petaflop or whatnot, it's hard to understand what it is. So we understand, or I'm sure you guys do, that a megabyte or a mega amount of data is a million. A gigabyte, a lot of CPUs are rated in gigabytes, right? That is a billion. Once you hit tera, it turns into a trillion bytes or a trillion processes. And then finally, a peta is a quadrillion. So we're looking at a supercomputer that is getting close to, let's say, three quarters of a peta flop of data that it can manipulate. That is three quarters of a quadrillion things that is processing per second. <laughs> okay, you're talking about floating point calculations, getting close to one quadrillion, which is infinitesimal. It's hard to even think about that. But just to give you a scope on how fast and how many calculations this can do. All right. Now, knowing this and knowing how fast this is, what is the purpose of having it? Now, we were talking about being able to prototype and prototype faster and yada, yada, yada. Well, there's a lot of things that you can do with supercomputers like this. All right. Now, some of the things are, for example, you can allow that, like I said before, that no prototyping. So you no longer have to create a physical product representation of the product that you're trying to develop to test it, okay? We can now test everything virtually, three-dimensionally, inside a software program, okay? Because it can calculate so much so quickly, it's able to do that. Also, by doing so, you, we can now recognize deficiencies in the product a lot quicker. Maybe where structurally things are a little bit too thin and they'll be more prone to crack because we can put pressures onto these structures that we, that we create instead of having to create them in on like a CNC machine and then actually put physical pressure on them to see when they crush or when they crack or where those specific soft or let's say softer spots are that we need to reinforce we can do that once again, virtually. That is amazing. Also, we have the point that we can just simply decrease the product manufacturing costs and of course, the time that it takes in completion. We now will be able to get an exact amount of plastic needed, all right? The exact amount of metal, the exact amount of everything when it comes to manufacturing and also, to really hone in on the robots that create these units, all right, to get them to create them as quickly and efficiently as possible, right? We're talking about efficiency and we're talking about speed. That's one of the things that is just fantastic when you're talking about developing within a computer environment. You could get down to decimals this long. Now also what you can do with this is you can do, for example, calculate heat distribution or just any type of thermal dynamics. Think about that. This is something that Canon needs in spades, right? Thermal dynamics is extremely important. To be able to create a structure, put heat to it in a specific location, and now through your thermal dynamic software, know where that heat will dissipate or where that heat will migrate to, to understand where you need to exhaust it or how you need to pipe it or reroute it to another location of the camera. Thermal dynamics is 
a really powerful thing that they'll be able to do a lot more efficiently with this specific computer. Why? Because it's so damn fast, all right? It is so fast. You'll be able to do things a lot quicker. Also, you can do stuff like drop testing. You can take the camera that you build, drop test it from three feet, drop test it from five feet, drop test it from 20 feet, and see where the deficiencies are. How much drop can it take, right? You can also determine, for example, as packaging, right? How much packaging and how dense does the packaging need to be to be able to ship and not have it damaged in shipping? Right? Packaging is really big when it comes to product creation. Trust me, I do product development on a regular basis, right? Product packaging is very important. Just look at all of your Apple products and the packaging that they come in. That is a perfect example of this. What can be done? 3D CAD, bringing it all together and doing drop tests and crush tests and water tests and sealing tests and all this stuff, but through the computer instead of actually having to prototype, which is awesome. Also, you could do model testing, right? From model to model, you can test the design, you can test theories, you can test a design change in minutes instead of days or weeks or months. You can have someone come on board, literally in an eight hours, make a change to a specific camera, and now run it through heat dynamic software, and now all of a sudden we know exactly where the heat point will be. And the next crew that comes on board will say, ah, yeah, we're a little bit hot in this zone over here, we need to pipe it around this way. You can do that in a day. You can do that in a few hours, because this computer is that powerful. and. Honestly, guys, the list goes on and on and on. I can get even more technical about it, but keeping it all relatively kind of easy to grasp and to understand, there's a lot of things that can be done with a supercomputer at this caliber, all right? One of the most important to me, obviously, is, and I'm sure all of you can recognize it, is that thermal dynamics. Okay, they've been doing it for a long time already, but this will allow them to do it even better. Now, the other thing that I found was interesting is when I was reading the articles about this, one of the articles that I saw was over on Petapixel, and Petapixel said something like, you know, Canon is picking up this new supercomputer so that they can play catch up um, and catch up to Sony. Sony's development on the mirrorless side. And I was thinking about that, guys, and I don't know how you feel about it. Um, I don't have a horse in the race. I really don't care. But I think that the comment is kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Do you think that Sony is so far advanced and they are creating new cameras at this breakneck speed that Canon won't be able to keep up with? I mean, I don't know. I don't see that. You know, I, I see Canon literally in one cycle have gotten pretty close to either catch up or at least close to catch up to maybe even furthering what Sony has done already. So we're talking about like one cycle. So, you know, they've been developing for, you know, what is it, seven, eight years, 10 years now. So I don't know about that. But I can tell you one thing though, this machine will be coming online. It is said first half of 2021, that's when this supercomputer will go into operation. At that point, I think we're gonna start seeing this exponentially quicker rollout of new products from Canon. That could be lenses, it could be bodies, it could be printers, it could be anything. But having this, supercomputer that can calculate more and faster than their current supercomputers, I think is going to really, really show up in production, Canon production for 2021, especially towards the end of 2021 going into 2022. That's my, that's my opinion. Now, some people will look at it this and say, well, how the hell big does this thing have to be? Well, According to my research, this specific machine, this FX1000, sits in a half rack, a half rack. Now, the computer nerds out there know what a half rack looks like. 
Just think about a rack, a computer rack, right? Where you have your racks of computers, right? It's one rack. It's let's call it about seven feet tall, seven and a half feet tall by let's call it two and a half feet wide. Think about half of that. That is this whole computer. It is tiny. <laughs> it is absolutely tiny with like 192 CPUs, let's call it, and RAM that's just unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable, the amount. So this is going to be very powerful. I think Canon's going to get a lot of use out of it. I want to know what you think. What should they do with it? Where are they having issues? I personally think the biggest issue that they've been having as of late is heat, thermal dynamics, how to get heat dissipation to happen in a specific location or to exhaust heat out of a specific location without breaking seal or by breaking seal minimalistically. All right. So that's where I think that they can really just bump up their game because we understand that as these cameras do more and more and more, we see Canon doing 8K now. We understand also that to do that, you are producing a ton of heat. When you produce a ton of heat, you limit the amount of time that you can record. You actually also increase the amount of noise in the images captured. Heat is the bane of the existence of all electronics. And especially when it comes to cameras that are smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more sealed. Okay. So these are just some thoughts. I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about this brand new super uh, computer, the FX 1000 from Fujitsu that Canon is picking up? What do you think? What do you think? Do you want one? <laughs> I'll take one. That would be freaking awesome, right? Awesome. What would I do with it? I'd probably do some more product design. Anyways, I digress. So guys, if you enjoy this content, even a little bit, please throw it a big thumbs up. That really, really helps so that the YouTube gods look kindly on the channel, look kindly on this video, and hopefully tell other people to go and check it out. It is very, very important for channel growth. So please give the video a thumbs up if you like it even a little bit. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. If you are subscribed, click this little button, this little bell over here, click the bell. So whenever I come out with a new video or if I go live, you will be notified of that immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. So guys, thank you so much for joining me once again here for Tea Time. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.